this is Divine Sunshine. Happy Mother's Day to those of you all my subscribers and those of you all that act as in, in the role of mothers to rather if you have them naturally or if you are adopting or you birth them from your heart. It doesn't matter. Those of you all that have the mothering spirit and energies that you're helping to nurture those who are um, younger than you or those of you all that's helping them to evolve and come to a better version of themselves you still are housing and um, having the nurturing of uh, of a mother's spirit. So happy Mother's Day to you. All right, this is the overall energies. I'm going to do the format a little different. Last time Spirit had told me to do it. So I'm going to do the first half. I'm going to talk about the Divine Feminine. And then I'm going to next half, I'll talk about this Divine Masculine. But we're still both the same energies as well but in the same because at first i was going to do two separate videos and then spirits like nope because that still shows separatism so we're still there but it'll help you to be able to digest the energies a little better okay so the overall energies for the collective period is this oh i forgot about clear let me get those out do i have it there no i gotta go over i see it So we've got the Knight of Wands, which to me, again, is being able in our thinking to be able to hold that action that we need to take, but also take be encouraged, be use courage to be able to do that. Now, we got to kind of watch it because we could get a little zealous about this uh, being in this uh, mode of being in uh, taking action about some things, too, as well. But what I see here is with this one here is he's very calm. If you look there, I'm very centered. I know where I'm going. And so I'm very relaxed in knowing that. So this is the energy that we are in right now. We know we're taking action. We're very relaxed where we are. And we have courage right where we are in this moment. We also, the next thing is, is also right now, energetically, the overall energy is just beating to our own drum, okay? We want that freedom. This horse is representing freedom right here in the background, but it's a dark horse. So that means things are happening behind the scenes that we just don't know. So some transcendence energies is going on here, but in, in order for us to get that freedom uh, as well. So this might, whatever it is, might creep up on you. Uh, as well, I don't know why I pick it up. They're saying it might be some secret, something that needs to be told. It has the truth that has not been revealed. That's going to be able to help to give you freedom right where you are. But we see all of the four wands here. So that means that's helping you to keep balance, especially in your emotions. You just like you might say, I just cried two tears in the bucket. Just fuck it. And just let me just go ahead and just express it be me. I don't care about what anybody else. We have been in this quarantine for long periods of time. And now I understand in my emotions, I got to be me. Okay. You also are still, when it comes to um, dealing with the divine counterpart, you really are, to me, this card always represents, this is the uh, three of wands, which to me is understanding that i'm waiting on spirit because this reminds me of spirit soul and body the trinity but also looking at it this is the divine feminine divine masculine and spirit is right there in the middle of things holding the high watch and so understanding that this right here is like she's saying emotions i'm just waiting for my right period of time to jump on it rather it's in your missions your purpose or if it's the divine masculine or uh, anybody that's in a karmic situation or um situation third party energies as well as say i'm just waiting for the right time so i got my board ready and when you got that big wave that they always say surface talking about then once i see it come on that's going to be my signal to come go ahead and just join in on it so right now this is my i call it again this is divine timing waiting on divine timing to bring upon those things to come to shore come to you now, Source wants us to be able to deal with, how do we deal with doing that? Clear. We got several of them. This week, um, dealing with the energies, it wants us to liberation. Just be free. This again, waiting 
but having courage in waiting, which is really practicing patience because patience is, again, knowing I'm not going to do anything, but I'm not going to sit up here and just not be idle either. I'm just going to uh, trust the spirit. That means having courage that's going to bring me what is rightfully mine, okay? So you have a liberation about that. Some of us might feel like the eagle. That means really getting target, uh, laser beam, zooming in on exactly what we want, but also understanding that sometimes we might have to fly higher above uh, the storms about what's really actually being presented to us in the 3D. So you say that might be the 5D energy. That's good and dandy. Everything works out for according to sources will or that's need or our wills are met there again. But if we're down in the 3D and we're dealing with this quarantine, this isolation, it kind of shows something totally different than what's all uh, being reflected that's happening in the 5D. So we got to go a little higher in order for us to keep this high watch, this calmness and while we're taking action, just in being calm again. So that's the patience. The King of Wands is represented in this Knight of Wands, drumming to your own beat when it comes to your emotions and be able to wait on divine timing. But you still got to be able to find liberation. So in those energies there, they have a tendency that they could be the shadow draw you down because now I got to be patient. Now I'm waiting on divine time and how long that's going to be. But you got to be able to find liberations with that. Planetary cycles. We got a lot of things that's happening and shifting and making that paradigm shift. Please look at the playground experience, the sandbox and the playground experience, talking about making the shift and living out of the 3D consciousness as well this helps you to understand in order for you to sin you got to watch the things of the the people who you're hanging out with you got to watch out with uh how you are ascending on this journey as well what things are you just constantly finding yourself attracted to and revolving those negative energies or negative ideas or those things where you got to kind of let it go and start finding other places for you to orbit these planetary cycles that are actually happening and occurring are helping us energetically to have that push to find where we actually need to land where we actually need to orbit around and then we also have to have balance i talked about that in the knight of wands and in the three of wands things having that balance as well so we can be able to have that evolution of what is called you in our communications and a lot of yellow here so that means we got to stand in our power so the two things that's highlighted this week is the throat chakra and also is the um the yellow which is again uh your solar plexus how you uh, standing in your power, how you being in your authority about things. That's being shown that. So that's the overall energies for the collective. Now let's look at the Divine Feminine. Clear. The Divine Feminine 5D. That might, if that's so, it'll come back out. In the 5D, what's going on? Oh, I don't know, feel like I want to like, definitely come on out. There we go. Marguerite Porte, the mystic of divine love. Love is divine and I am nothing except love. So the divine feminine is moving in the energies in the 50 of uh, knowing that she is love. I, everything I do is love. Everything I exhume, I express is love. It's coming from love. So all I have to do is just be love. Okay. So that's what's being expressed. How is that being um, expressed in the 3D? Clear. I want to definite. Thank you. So the divine feminine this week might find herself having some towers here. Okay, and her thinking, she's like, I don't understand why this is happening. Uh, however, again, in order for your thinking and your feminine, uh, which is your emotions, to be able to merge, you're going to have to do that. Some of you all thinking that it's from an outside source because I see a man here with an axe. So something else, some of you all might say it might be the divine masculine that set those things in in um, motion. So maybe it might be a masculine energy that set the things that's in motion. You're thinking, your own thinking, or somebody else's thinking, thinking might have done that as well. 
uh however i see almost a heart drawn on this man's chest here so whatever it is that you thought maybe you in a karmic situation third party situation you might thought that they had your heart but at the same time they are uh having this act some kind of way they are able to chop you down which could be in a good thing because if they're chopping you down and getting rid of those things that no longer serve you also have the moon you got to get rid of this this illusion. The moon is like represents the illusions, things that are no longer serving you, things that you look at and say, oh, they're still good. It's all good in hood, but they're not. And uh, to be in some way, some of you all divine feminists are still nurturing the divine uh, masculine uh, energies in the 3D, although you're trying to take uh, introspection and looking at yourself to see about what things that you can be able to uh Look at the seat of the soul of yourself through your mirror. You've been looking, you're looking at the man in the mirror, but then also at the same time, you've been trying to find ways to kind of celebrate the toast or some things in which you could kind of most time when you're drinking and you have your wine glass, you're trying to relax with where you are, and uh, you're still trying to get that pearl in the clam. Uh, which is very hard to do, but most of the time, in order for you to be a pearl, if you think about the clam, uh, most of the time, it's some kind of irritation that's going on in the throat, which, again, that goes back to the communication that's being shown there, so you can be able to balance the divine feminine, especially in that, and I see the blue here is in, your, in the emotions as well. See a lot of birds you want to ascend, so you've got to kind of really look at as far as, uh, although you want to celebrate However, you got to look at things. What's irritating you? You got to learn how to divine feminine to like let those things, uh, all those things, got to fork it roll. All those things are irritating you, but you know at the end of the day that you have that beautiful pearl. Most of the time that's happening is each time that the, uh, the clam, you know, keeps on spitting out like secretions to kind of smooth over the edges of what's going on with uh, that thing that irritant or that sand or that rock that got in there and keeps on doing it so it can be more easier for you to uh, for it to be able to live with uh, that's the same thing and I'm picturing that that figure that um, secretion that it is for us as feminists is forgiveness how it becomes a better uh, peel although it's bitter to swallow if we keep on secreting it with forgiveness just forgiving it just loving it just letting it go uh, so it can smooth out that thing and then at the end you have something very uh, precious and very rare of a gem okay so this is where we are with that divine feminine the heart of the matter with you is clear Is unrequited love. You're getting rid of, and I think that came out last time, you're still getting rid of things that no longer serve you. Clear. Which causes you to be able to have the beat of beat to your own drum there because you're trying to gain that freedom. You're waiting on divine um, timing to kind of work on some things to remove or uh, to bring the things that you want into your life. So you being patient, you practicing patience with understanding, hey, it's out of my hands. I surrender like dad's favorite song. After you're done, all you can, you just stand. You just kind of just go with the flow of things. You want to have this unrequited love here, understanding that where you at is not enough. It's because you understand there's an unfinished symphony. It's something better out there. You want this new beginning. You have this, I call this Cindy Lopper look at things. Girls just want to have fun. And your feminine energies, you want to have fun. This journey has become so heavy, so uh, weighed down that you feel at this point it's like it's got to be something out else out there i know it is maybe it might be with your divine masculine maybe you started something with your mission and your purpose and you never did finish it and so now you feel like you want to finish and complete this okay what are you hiding clear fine feminines what are they hiding That again, this came out last time that you feel like right where you are, you're not really using your divinity. It's just like blah, they go to black course again. But again, you want freedom, but guess what? Something's happened behind the scenes you're just not aware of. And when it does happen, it's gonna sneak up on you. 
okay? Nothing is naked before the stars. Maybe some of you all kind of in this thing, as you're more so into your physical. How am I appearing to others? How am other people perceiving me? And again, it's not even about that. Become naked upon the stars. You are the star. You the one in the spotlight. So you go in here and you create this new uh, dynamic of who you are version of you. Because again, remember again, love is divine. And it says here, I am nothing except but love. So if I'm love, if I'm divine, then guess what? I'm love. So you don't need anybody else to be um, validating or confirming who you are. You feel like you're the queen of your world. Okay, understanding that now where you are is, it's not about, uh, to me, it's like you got to the point that you've been very over controlling, overbearing, that ego that was represented in the card here earlier has kind of gotten you out of control because you're trying to control everything. Like, nope, he's not coming back because the way he come back, I feel like I don't have a good handle over him. I can't make him do X, Y, and Z. Nope, I'm not doing this because, again, I can't see where I'm going to end up by me letting this job go. You know, those things. And so you're grinding and rooted, but it says you're grinding and rooted in the wrong things, okay? What are the life changes that you need to have? I think about the battle I seen between Queen, uh, between uh, Erica Badu and Gia Scott. And clear on my Facebook thing, I'll take a picture and I'll, I'll um, put it on my community tab because I want this to be long. Uh, I talked about how they really had showed how you do a contest, uh, competition or a battle between two because uh, with them, uh, they were very polite with each other. They're like, we're friends. I don't know why they're trying to pit us together because we ain't even coming from that space. And uh, that was interesting of how they had did that because, again, they showed uh, camaraderie even when uh, Erica Badu's song wouldn't play. Uh, she had got kicked out because her uh, phone was out of uh, battery life and charge. She went on ahead and played her song. She said, well, she's going to play Tyrone, so I'm going to play it for her. You know, other competitions, they'd be like, well, we're just going to wait, we're going to wait, and they don't do anything. But they really had everybody said from the con, uh, from the from the little contest of the battle they had. Everybody say how it was such healing that went on between those two. Uh, that's the same thing when we talk about this queen energies. We're here to be able to to heal. And if you're at that point where you like, I'm not gonna forgive, like we talk about this pearl and you're secreting forgiveness and stuff like that. You're not really in your true queen power because queen is the emotions. And help it to be able to heal. You can have your boundaries. You can tell people where they could go in a nice way. Or maybe you don't have to have to tell them in a firm way. But remember, again, at the end of the day, your thing is to heal. Sentimental feelings. So, again, you're getting caught up with what's happening in the past, which has caused you having problems to move fast forward into the future. So, in order, especially when you talk about areas of love. And so, this is why they're saying you've got to come to that. Divine Feminine. Okay, clear. What well, do you have to surrender? Divine Feminine. Low self-esteem. Surrender low self-esteem. You deserve success, love, and abundance. Set an intention to identify and release any remnants of low self-esteem. For the divine feminine, surrender your addictions. Addictions is bad habits, something that you think of over and over and over again. Or you do things, and you're like, I can't have no control over it. So it said, whether you're addicted to substances, food, people, sex, or overworking, take action to begin to heal the addictions and replace it with healthier alternatives. Okay, divine feminine. What is your divinity? Clear. That you got to work on. God of love. Interesting. Told you you are love. Understanding that love is going to come in various shapes and sizes, ways of expressions that's going to might be totally different than you. Okay? Totally different than that. So, again, 
how you want this new beginning with love again you got to have uh understand you got to get rid of the things that no longer serve you it says it again right here with this vulture here some things that they're there you know things that clean up those things that are dead they serve a purpose to get rid of to create new you can't begin something unless you end something so and you got to get larger beam to uh, focus on it so again this one is really the actual the traditional um this is cupid but he does not look like the traditional cupid he looks very different than what we have learned in history book or what has been taught or told to us that's the same thing your love again beating to your own draw might look totally different than the way somebody else is expressing love but remember you are your own unique person you come here on earth to show people the way to love in your own special, unique way. Okay? All right, then. And what is the message that the Divine Masculine has for you, Divine Feminine? Clear. It says, listen with your heart. You are listening to what is being said to you, but you need to listen to with a loving heart. That's a good one. The Divine Master says to you, Divine Feminine, action speaks loudly. Express your love through your actions. Act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if <laughs> he's calling. Hello, yes, Divine Masculine. <laughs> yes. Okay. You want to go out on a date? Oh, wow. That's wonderful. We could do that. <laughs> act as if your partner is here. Whether you have someone in your life or not, act as if they are with you. You will always consider them. I've told you all to do an exercise. Take one day each day to kind of picture yourself, you and your divine counterpart together. That'll help you so when the time comes, when they do come and appear, you won't have that hard transition, you know, of moving into actually them being there and then you kind of clam up or you have that guard up. This is one way in which it kind of helps you to be able to do that. Uh, because your body, it doesn't know the difference between fantasy and real. When you keep on doing that, it'll be able to uh, calm those fears, calm your nerves, be able to accept and receive them because you don't want anything else energetically to be a block for them to come in. Be authentic to who you are. You are asked to be real and true pertaining to who you are and how you feel. Talked about that earlier with the energies there. And express love through gifts. Giving a small token to someone, express your love to them. Okay, uh, that sounds like a special message for my divine masculine. I got that. Clear. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, what's the energies that um, Source is going to be moving um, the divine feminine into? Oh. Two of them. Okay. Four of cups. Okay, so now it's two ways with this. Here I see her kind of sitting and waiting. Yes, the saga continues again. Yes, you're going to be still wet, but guess what? You got four cups. In the meantime, you should be finding out ways to be able to fill that cup so it can grow because I see right here, this is the rainbow. This is union. Union is behind you, but you ain't paying attention to what's going on here because you sitting in here with this woe is me attitude. So I'm telling you from those of you all, you got a, a advantage point. From this, move out of this energy right here with these four cups. The reunion is here. It's like I'm breathing right on your back, but you paying attention to everything else that's in the 3D, okay? This says to me, pay attention Get to growing, get to going on what you need to as far as filling these cups up, whether it's following your bliss, getting on your mission and purpose, or just say, just following, just taking care of you, that self-love. Get into that mode of doing that, getting out of this. This will in turn cause your good or your union to come right behind you and tap you on your shoulder like, Ooh, who is that? Oh my God, it's here. So again, 
this is the energy that they want you to move it out of and this is where you need to be moving into next filling in your own cups knowing union is here and concentrating on what you need to grow okay next thing for the uh, divine feminine and this is going to cause you again this is that ten of cups okay Again, in pen, t Ten of Pentacles. Well, I wish it was that one, but Ten of Pentacles, which is getting mastery over the 3D. Being able to have the divine feminine and divine masculine energies to come together to give birth to something new. Okay? Or this is also could be, again, the, he, the union is here. It also manifests in the 3D with you and your divine counterpart coming together and creating that sense of family. Getting that wealth together as well, because this could be also the energy that we're moving into as well. Look like I seen the uh, screen turn yellow with that one, so they liked it that one. Okay, so that's your energies. That's divine feminine. Okay, let's move on. So twenty five. Okay, let's move on to the divine masculine. Let's look and see what the energies is for the divine masculine in the fifty. Clear. Okay, the Atlas. Okay, Atlas carries the weight of the world and heavens on his shoulder. This to me, when I seen here with the divine master, he's moving into the energies of understanding how to weigh both of them. And I'm seeing almost like a, back in the day when they used to carry things, they almost looked like the, the Libra scales. And they used to carry the buckets of water on both of them. So he's got the earth and the water right here. He's balancing. I'm seeing that like that. So you say... Which can be a burden, okay? But learn how to balance because, you know, in order for you to carry both those things, then he's got to have an equal distribution of weight on both. So you can't be more going to the world and more going to the heavens, and you don't have that balance going on there. So, again, this is clarified by the conscious. So he's gaining the conscious about things. Again, no more of the energies, and I think I read this last time, no more of the energies of him just doing things haphazardly just off the cuff because I felt like it because I wanted to because that's because I'm able to. You know, the Divine Master used to talk kind of similar like that too because I want to because I can. It's no more of that. It's more now, it's like everybody is involved and I'm weighing everybody, like the Libra energies, really, truly weighing everybody's in the situation and how the ships fall that way, okay? And this is causing him in the 50 to be more gentler. Not that it's mine because I can bump what you think. That used to be that driving force, that, that masculine, that 3D masculine self or just like, like really driving the car too hard. It's like, dang, my dad used to kind of wear through cars because he had like a lead foot. So no more lead footing through life, okay? Ease up off the gas a little bit. Take in the scenery. Get to know, you know, as you're accelerating, why you're putting the pedal on accelerating the way you are. Why you holding the steel wheel the way that you are. Because he's moving into energies of doing. I just said that. I ain't read the card. I'm talking to you. Moving in energies of just doing. Okay. Uh, to me, again, it's out of that just that being state, too. So now he's moving into more of an action of being gentle, uh, linear, okay? So he's looking across the board as far as how he's making actions in which, um, like, time is linear. It's just hitting across the board. So to me, instead of him looking at that laser beam focus, he's now looking at it with a wider scope and seeing how all his hands and all the different pockets or all the different things have played a part with, thank you for divine confirmation, with where he is now and which cups he actually wants to continue to fill 
at this time as well. Uh, if time is linear, he's thinking about his time, how he spread himself time wills too. So I'm getting really with the divine master. He's really thinking about this balance. How am I balancing myself with the world and 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 heaven, spirit, and the the physical man? How am I doing this? So he's just becoming, like I said, linear, understanding it's across the board. It's no longer it's they fault or this person or this one's this. It's across the board, okay, uh, there. All right, so now how's this looking in the 3D? How's this translating into the 3D? Clear. Okay, he wants to just like the divine feminine. We're mirroring each other. Like I said, at the end of the thing, this is the energies that he's pushing into. She's going into towards the end. He's already in this understanding. He wants the community now. So he's almost like we're shifting. It's like he's like, I'm already there. You getting to that hell. I've been in that <laughs> that energy. Where you been? You a little slow. So my thing is, <laughs> right, I want that sense of coming together. It's twin flames and understanding the core that there's a connection. See, but what's different is, is he's now recognizing there's a connection between uh, all the divine feminine and divine masculine energies within and the divine feminine and divine masculine energies without. He wants this new beginning, too, as well. Um, this is because spirit has been, I'm looking at him, looking at this angel here, thing, his spirit has been really been talking to him and telling him about the beauty that could be able to unfold by being in this relationship. And he's starting to see now the beauty in it. He's also moving into the energy as understanding that he's deaf. He's got to, in order to begin something, you got to end something. It's been steadily been saying this to you divine masculines you know what you want to do he's got time to uh, separate the sheep from the wheat whatever the good part the bad part you know understand that the hourglass is right there time is ticking it's k <laughs> it's like you got to kind of get the move in and you got to get moved like the, uh diana warrior war it goddess diana which you had that bow and arrow and you release Think about April. April talks about sometimes you got to pull back from the situation to be able to see exactly what you want to propel and tell yourself to. This is the action that you've got to do. What you mean by pull out? That means you got to pull out of these third party situations or you got to pull out of the karmic situation. Person, place, a thing. You know what it is. That job, that person, that place where you live at, the family members, those things. You're going to have to pull away so you can really get an understanding as to where you actually want to end up at. Okay? In your emotions, you got this knight of swords. You saying, okay, divine master said, oh, that sounds really good. But guess what? In my thinking, I don't know where the hell I want to even start. I don't even know what to do with this damn whip. I don't know how to say go, get my emotions under control. All I just know is that I got to get my emotions under control, okay? Uh, and I really don't know how to do that. I see a lot of people like kind of looking at me to say, okay, now what you going to do? You know, what you going what you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you, bad boy, bad boys. What you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you. So okay, you been in this you to your mind, you been in this bad boy mindset for a while, but you just don't know where exactly where you need to kinda like go at this point. Uh, and like I said, you, you, this is where you are. You got the message. Judgment is upon you. It's like it's time to render the verdict right now. Okay. We said that. Something's got to die. Uh, but at the same time, you hit this knight of swords. And you like, honestly, I, the, the truth is there, but it's on a slant, which is not good. It needs to be straight up and down. It's like you kind of making it feel for whatever you is like, yeah, I know the truth. I got to leave this situation, but you know, they need me. It's quarantine. I can't really go nowhere. You know, you got to kind of get to the point that say, you know what, even in quarantine, you know, you can still start the wheels in motion. It's like, okay, will we stuck here? You know, when I say I'm going for a run to the grocery store, maybe I can start or either start talking and, 
going separate places all day around. You go downstairs in the basement or something like that and start looking in and talking to lawyers. You know, if you're in a situation that you're married with that and say, I just kind of want to get an idea. I know I'm quarantined. I can't move. But what is it that I can get emotions right now? You know, because when I'm out of this, when this quarantine is over with, I don't know when it is. You know, I want to kind of get this together. And so I can move from this point, you know, whatever. Start looking for other places uh, that you can be able to go and for you to be able to stay. Uh, you know, who can you talk to if it's that bad? You know, so just start getting the wheels in motion uh, at this point. Uh, I know it's not too much of where you can go, but you know what? We can't use that as no lie or no well planned out lie of stopping us an excuse from stopping us from doing what we got to do, you know, because you can do, because I haven't seen people, you was like, well, it's quarantine time, but I haven't seen people, plenty of people on my Facebook timeline say, I went and got me a car. I'm like, who the hell think about getting a car in, <laughs> in quarantine time? So I say, I done went and bought me a house. So, I mean, if you, it's a will, there's a way. If you really want to be out of something and you really want something, the circumstances don't have nothing to do with what's going on with you. Because there's still some lawyers that still need work. They probably say, we can do our, uh, I can do my consultation with you via Zoom. You know, and I can do what I can do and file things on my end, even through this meeting. So, you know, that, let's not use that as no excuse for us not really making a good on what's the next step to help us to get to our freedom. Okay. What thing, what's the heart of the matter with you? Just talk to you. I don't know who I'm talking to, but clear. Somebody needed that talk with you uh, to help you understand that. That's nice. Past life relationships. Um, past life relationships. You have known this. I'm getting a, a fork in the road. Two ways. It's talking about also how you view in your past life relationships is how it's influencing you, divine masculine, about what's going on now as far as you being with your divine feminine. Uh, I'm also seeing that by you now moving into this new energy that they're saying you now moving with a conscious, you're moving in the energy of I got to do something or doing and linear and understanding across all times or how you're affecting all those things that is helping you to move from this gray like blah to this energies of you be, everything being in technicolor uh, as well. And so you really uh, it's like it's a hiding a vivid Vivid meaning life, wanting life, want to live uh, in everything. It's a vibrancy to everything now. Uh, before then, it was like, uh, you know, yeah, how you feel? I, right. you know, when I talk to the divine master, okay, we ain't got no other thing. So with this, no other words, but as I, <laughs> it's okay. So my thing is moving from that energy, and I'm seeing a butterfly here, helping you to transform into a, a whole new world, Okay. Past life relationships as well, I'm picking up. Uh, yeah, it's just more so of a negative, but um, connotation when you think about your love life and how things have turned out in the past and being scared to move on and move forward because it's like, well, in the past when I have life relationships, uh, X, Y, and Z happened. While well, I'm and I was having a conversation about dad and how him allowing past relationships with uh, X, Ys and stuff didn't allow him to be able to see mom for who she is and what she brought to the table. You know, a lot of times when you're in those common situations, though, their main reasons is, is for you to be able to see um, the divine feminine in more of uh, technicolor, how this person, the karmic, is versus you. To understand the differences is why they're so much shining brighter than any other relationship or partner that you had in the past. And this is the reason for that. Not for you to get more deeper into it. It's more to say, oh, you know, this X, Y, and Z happened. I don't like this when I'm in a relationship. But I know it's when I'm with the divine feminine, it don't happen that way. Okay, so now this is what I need to, and it should draw you more closer to that. Okay. Uh, also with this, it's helping you to build building blocks as far as your emotions, like a level up, but do it in an even way. You don't ever want to build any kind of house or foundation where you're doing this side and then this side, and then you got an uneven slant, especially when we talk about linear, you're going across the board. You want to be able to build that in an even way. 
uh, so the foundation will be sturdy, so it can be solid, uh, so you can be able to build upon that, okay? What is something that you're hiding, Divine Masculine? Clear. Calling in the storm. Phew, that was in somebody's personal reading. They said the vast master said that. You calling in the storm. Uh and you using your natural resources to do that. In some ways you're doing that because you're trying to see what things naturally with you uh needs to stay and what things do you need to kind of get rid of. Same thing just like the divine feminine and the emotion saying that she's got uh unrequited love. So you're dealing with that. And so you're really dealing with your natural resources. You're not looking at anybody else. You're looking for what's happening in the physical to help to fight these things uh, in order for you to call this storm. So some physical resources, 3D resources might be time, money. Those are some things that you could be able to do. Your own willpower, your own skill abilities, those are natural resources that you have. It's not looking on the outside um, for able to, to do that. Uh, and so you call on this storm again because like it, it, it's stuff got to be stirred up, especially you saying consciousness, you want to have a weight. Some of these things is on this thing that you're doing. I don't know what it's called. I can see it's like a balance thing and you have that and they held that to be able to carry things back uh, in the day. Uh, you, you can on some other stuff that don't need to be. It's like, listen here, I just got the pail of water. You know, I don't need nothing else weighing in on that. That remind me of uh, time, like a lot of times with my other dog, just she passed on when I used to bring in groceries. A lot of times she'd get her little fat self in the grocery bag and trying to see what did I bring in. She put her nose in there. And I said, listen, I can't carry the weight of this grocery bag and you fat so. So some got to give. <laughs> so I pushed nudge your way and say, come on. And then I'll go on. This is the same thing like that. You got the other extra weight, whether it's the karma situation, the third party energies. It's like, it's enough of me doing my own burdens. I don't need to be trying to do your burdens and my burdens at the same time. So you're getting to the point just to reflect, just like the divine feminine, where you are trying to get rid of those things that no longer serve you. Okay, when it comes to love. <sighs> Clear. Butterfly, what things you got to get rid of? This came straight up, and I felt that was it. Uh... Healthcare again. I think we talked about this last time. How you can for yourself, getting rid of some things. How you practice your self care, in your most in your heart things, especially with times that's going on now. I keep on picking up this signal with the divine masters. Watch your heart health. Do a lot of cardio. Watch what you take it in. How are you dealing with your heart? Because you know, uh, I seen that on Patricia McNeely that said divine masters have a tendency to have a lot of heart issues. Watch how you letting things wear on you. Make sure you're finding ways to kind of relieve and get rid of those things that wear in your heart spiritually, but also uh, how things are the stresses of life and how you're going through this stuff. It's how's that weighing on you as well. Volunteer, okay? This, again, when we're talking about volunteering, uh, with that, again, you got to eliminate some things. You might have to find yourself going ahead and sacrificing yourself, saying, I'm going ahead and volunteer myself to get out of this situation and be the one who's going to actually get things started. Or you might volunteer yourself, um, yeah, just to get things started. It's, it's not no other way here, especially in how you're communicating things. Uh, you know, uh, Instead of being, again, like what's going on now with these energies, instead of somebody telling you to do something, just go ahead and just move on your own. You know, the spirit ain't got to guide you. Say, you know, I'm going to go ahead and get things started so I can create this change that I need to. And so that in turn will cause for the things to um, support you. And they got self-employment. That's again, you say you want to be a doer. Fifth D say doing things. Or for you do things, you've got to go ahead and find those projects or those things that you have to do. You can't sit up there and wait for anybody to program you or to tell you what you actually have to do. Because you got a conscience now. And a trust on that conscience to tell you, that means the intuition and awareness in order to tell you what's the next following steps that you have to do. What do you have to surrender? Clear. Clear. 
you got to send render frustration because again like i said i could tell if you were like in this energy here like i don't know what to do but i know i got to get these emotions under rain and i'm tired of how other people looking at me trying to see what you what you gonna do now you're <laughs> like bad boy bad boy what you gonna do what you gonna do when they come for you so now again surrender to what is that had pretty much said that today so flow with what is instead of fighting it when you can't change the situation compassionately accepting it exactly as it is will bring you peace so okay maybe you might say i don't feel like writing well no you got to do something accept it the way it is that means don't look for the situation to get any better understand that the way it's presenting like uh my angelou says the way uh there when somebody show you who they are believe them so believe them exactly with the way that they are show themselves don't say well it's gonna get better you know this is temporary this because we underneath uh isolation we in quarantine this is why she acted this way believe me trust and believe those people who are showing themselves are acting in a very crazy way or a nasty way right now is uh, a result of how they would act if they were pressurized, which means just like a diamond, the more you give pressure to it, the more heat you put on it, the more it's going to come out showing who they are as a diamond. So that could turn out to be a rock. And the more pressure you put in, it's going to turn into a diamond. That's the same thing. Most people underneath pressure, that's what they said. I remember that one time. They said, people who are underneath pressure conditions or situations that are challenging, uh, the way they act is really truly who they are. It just nothing but intensifies it. So if they act acting really nasty, guess what? At the core, that's who they are. They can act like they are <laughs> all nice nicey nice that cried me up that remind me of my mom talking about G uh jill scott and like they had that battle and uh she was talking about she's like i'm something about this guy i just don't like i don't know you know she act like she all sweet but she's not really sweet so again who knows underneath a pressure situation how would jill react would she act not so sweet then guess what you would say welcome well welcome this is the real jill scott isn't it or is it going to be another way uh, will she still remain sweet? Then you say, well, then that's really truly who she is. That's who she is to the core, okay? It says again, next one, surrender negative thinking. You have control over your thoughts. When negative thoughts surface, say thank you for sharing and quickly refocus on positive affirmations. To me, when it says that negative thinking, when I say thank you for sharing, that reminds me about judgment. It goes back to maybe like thinking about maybe uh, if you have any childhood issues such as judgment, go to my childhood wounds, look at that and see. I got a workbook. Also, go to Divine Unisouls 11.co. It's just $11.11 that you can get there as well that can help you. Because if I hear that inner critic, most of the time it's talking about, uh, uh, yeah, you got the inner critic when they say be quiet or what they say, thank you for sharing. You're trying to silence that. Uh, as well so that's another way that maybe you might need to kind of um think about it does this stem back to how my mom judged me or a parent had judged me and how i'm very being very over critical uh with this and i have an overactive crown chakra do some crown chakra work as well or do work more so concentrating with your lower chakras your solar plexus your sacral and your root and that would take some of that energy from your crown down that way and it'll be lessened and it says surrender frustration i said that early frustration doesn't open any doors the key to resolving dilemma or dissolving a block is to take a breath center yourself and regroup so you may approach the situation more calmly i talked about that earlier pulling back like I said in that boy arrow when I had that death card and pulling back to really be able to see the situation for what it actually is. So that's in a karmic situation or in a third party situation or anything. Clear. You can't always see the problem in things if you write up close on things. Like I'm trying to read this card. I can't see what this is. But if I pull back and say, oh, it's a man and a woman. They doing the balancing thing. You know, that's just like if I do it like, wait, where's the thing at? Oh, it's this way. I do it like this. You say, I can't see nothing but the man's head. But if I pull it back, say, oh, okay, I see the overall picture. And that's why you have to do that. Okay? Physical ailments. I told you. Watch this. This is another warning card. Uh, I just told you. I was, like, I was about to say, Mama just told you. I just told you about this. 
divine masculine. Some about the matters of the heart that's really coming to manifest there. Let's watch the heart, the cardio, do some exercises. Watch how you're managing stress, those things, because I'm picking up from you all. It might be physical ailments, period, but I'm picking up from you all. Watch the heart, the heart, okay? That's where it's going. it might show up at, okay? And let's look and see what's the message from the divine feminine to divine masculine. Clear? She says, be supportive. <laughs> Make a genuine effort to show you care, okay? Be supportive of yourself, she's saying. Be supportive of her and be supportive in the world, okay? That's a threefold thing. What is the energies that um, the source is going to move the divine masculine into next? Clear? Eight of Swords, get in control of this negative thinking. And find yourself freeing yourself. How are you going to be able to do that? You got to look at the man in the mirror. Plus to me, when I look at this, it's like no more of denial. You know, can we say, nah, I'm free. But then when I look at the window of your soul, you so tied up by all this negative thinking. You're not free. You're acting like you're free, but you're not. So again, operating with a conscious on things. Understand consciously, which means come with the intuition and the awareness that something has to change. You got to become a doer. You're doing things. And then also linear across time. How can you clear all this stuff? Clear and transmute this kind of action across all space and time. Maybe now you said... I'm cleared of it, but somewhere in the past, somewhere deeper in the future, this might come back and haunt you again with these negative thinking. So this is the energy that the uh, divine uh, is moving you out of, okay? All right, then. Uh, those of you all that's interested, uh, that might need help, divine masculine, say, I got this negative thinking, I would like some support. I have a sunshine um, circle support group that meets on Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Uh, the, I mean, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Well, I get Thursday. Um, Fridays at 1 p.m. Central Time. It's just $11.11. .11. Uh, you will get, uh, so far we've had, I give, uh, we talk about what things is going on. You get support from the group. You will also get a mini reading each time when we meet about things that source say we should be working on or either what source tells me that you all need to do. So you do get my services in there. And also we talk about what things that we might want to accomplish the next time we meet uh, as well. Um, and that helps us with accountability because sometimes we don't do things when we're supposed to unless we're held accountable for it. So you get that support in the circle. Go to divineunisource11.co so you can be able to sign up and become. As soon as you do that, I will soon send you a Zoom link because we meet by Zoom. Let me state that. So because the reason why I do that is so we can be able to see, touch and agree, see about any um, in your aura, uh, in the energies that might be attached to you that seems like you're not right. We're not there to judge. We're just there to kind of tap into your energies and see how we can be able to meet. So, yes, that's why we're doing it through um, Zoom. Okay? Until next time, I take off my glasses because I say I did all my little lovely makeup. You can't see me how I beat my face today. <laughs> so, again... So, as always, so you get to uh, this. I say, I feel like playing with makeup. I told you right now with me and my childhood things, everything that I like to do with my child, like to do the nails and everything and play with makeup. It's like they say, I want to revisit that. So, I say, today is Mother's Day, and so I'm going to beat my face. <laughs> so, it looks a cutie on that one. So, I say, I would do that today. So, as always... Come and join us with that. A lot of good stuff, a lot of healing comes from that as well. You have somebody to let you know you're not alone on this journey. We have your back, okay? So, as always, stay uplifted, stay motivated, stay ascended. Namaste, namago. Love you. And happy Mother's Day and enjoy yourself.